All right. Um, yeah, I guess we can start. Yeah, that's it. Too bad this mic is not there. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh 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 my god! Okay. <laughs> look! Look! Listen, seriously, I do not understand this argument. I do not understand this argument. It makes no fucking sense to me. Shut up, shut, shut, shut up. Okay. You know how I program a computer? I put my face close to the microprocessor and I whistle at it. And that causes there to be a differential in the voltages across the wires because that's the only thing that's real. The ones and zeros mask you from that. Fuck ones and zeros. See, assembler, oh my god, do you know all of the pain that assembler is hiding you from? Do you know the implementation details that C is hiding you from? And so now you're going to tell me that this is a step too far? That is such utter bullshit. You want to mute a view uh, 100 pixels to the right. What you want to do is like uh, u.frame.origin.x plus zero. U.center. U.frame is not a reliable value. 100 doesn't work either. And that's, uh, that's, the, that's I, I think, uh, in this case, there's, this is a classic example. You're going to limit me to bytes? Fuck that. Every level of abstraction costs you something like that. It's not, not worth throwing I'm, the baby out I'm with not the debating. Up. I'm definitely not debating on whatever performance or... Either ways, I found my tagline for Objective Column 2013. Fuck ones and zeros. <laughs> I think it's an amazing tagline. All right, so the tagline for this year is fuck ones and zeros. Welcome to Cologne, or I should say actually welcome to Objective Cologne, just like I said last year, but this is version 2.0, uh, Objective Cologne 2013. Um, the very first thing I want to do is to show this picture, actually, and to thank all those people, all those amazing people. Thank you. Some of you guys were there. And um, I want a big round of applause for Objective Cologne 2012. So that's an amazing bunch of people. Uh, 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 some of them are back this year. Some of, of, of them are not back, but back. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for them, actually, because this year is going to be even more of a blast. Um, the number one important thing is if you're going to tag something on Flickr, Twitter, whatever, uh, use Objective CGN. Um, um, and uh, if you want to go on the internet, uh, just use any Alter Versteigungshalle. There is, for the moment, two, but it should be three. Uh, but we, we'll be back to internet in a few minutes. Uh, you got a few things, so wear it, stick it, Facebook, like it, and spread the word. Uh, I hope nobody broke his uh, uh, nice cappuccino cup yet in the bag by trying the bag like Scotty did a few minutes ago. And like, whoop, whoop. oh, there was something in the bag. Yeah, Scotty, there was something in the bag. So very important detail for those of you who are here for the first time. Uh, a little bit of explanation where we are. This is Alte Versteigungshalle. It's very high, and if you want to go uh, to the toilet, you have to go all the way to the to the top. And when you are on the top, you have to go all the way down. And then for those of you who um, are not very good at German, uh, luckily they can look the sign. But otherwise, a little bit of German, Damen, means the queue looks like that, and Herren, just like last year, means the queue looks like that. That's, that's what makes an IT conference. <laughs> um, and then, um, but there is a secret door, and there is a secret toilet. It's over here. Um, and as you have seen, the, the food is going to be served over there uh, at noon. It's going to be pretty awesome, just like last year. OK, back to the internet thingy. Faster internet? Uh, well, can any, any of you guess what this is? Or have you seen what this is? those pictures. Well, the GPS location will tell you that this is there. This is the roof of the Alte Versteigungshalle. Um, so I will show you a video to tell you, oh, I tried to have a faster internet, but I couldn't really make it. But I, I was told I have a more stable internet. So we will see if it's true. And Anyway, who needs internet? Because the conference is going to be so awesome, or all the speakers are going to be so awesome. That said, I tried. Believe it or not, folks, I was crazy enough to go on the uh, roof of the Alta Versteigungshalle and try to get the internet faster for you guys. Um, so it's very interesting, it's uh, very high. Wait! 
Ja, ich komme runter. Said, I'm going down. Ich komme runter. Um, so it was here, over there. I was there. I, I tried actually uh, to. Um, there is a technology which allows to um, uh, uh, send a signal uh, over a few kilometers and to get the internet. But I should have seen some uh, magic tower in Köln, Deutsch, from the Fachhochschule, and um, it wasn't making it. So, but I tried, anyways. And it was funny to go on the roof of the Alte Versteigungshalle and to almost die for you guys. All right, uh, one. Uh, Another note is that tonight at 7 p.m., not before, please, do whatever you want between 5 and 7. I don't know, uh, go visit Cologne or whatever, or, or go back to the hotel or whatever, but don't show up too early because otherwise I'm going to be killed by this very nice guy. Um, uh, so we're going to have the conference dinner. Uh, tomorrow, please come at 9 a.m. as well, just like today, so you can communicate with your peers and so on and so forth. And tomorrow evening, there is also a don another dinner, uh, which If, if any of you wants to join us, uh, if some of you are still here for the hack days, um, just please be so kind and go tell Judy. Judy is holding a list so I know if, uh, if I book at this very nice uh, Spanish place for, uh, or pre-book for uh, 20, 30 people or, or 10 people, whatever. Uh, and most importantly, this year, The event is a third day, uh, three day event for those who could make it. Uh, on the Thursday, we're going to be there for Objective Code Line. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm a very amazing at word playing. Um, this is the address. It's in an amazing uh, location uh, where there's the, big, the biggest tower in, in, uh, in Cologne, which is basically, it, it's, it's like the Twin Towers in, in, in New York, but just smaller, and there's only one. So it's not like the Twin Towers. Um, And this is an amazing place called Startplatz, uh, 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 which were kind enough to host us for this day, so I'm looking for, for it. Be there at nine, uh, present what you've coded on. I already have my idea. I know where I, what I'm going to work on. And then um, you should get out at 6 p.m. That's basically the deal. Um, and that's, uh, that, that's, that's where it is. It's, uh, it's a nice location. and. Uh, Yeah, I hope we, well, there's no sound. Uh, I think I removed the sound, actually, because I, I was planning to speak over there. And uh, yeah, so this is, this is where it is. This is the big uh, Twin Tower-y thingy, whatever. So um, that's basically it. I just want to mention one last thing before we go to Scotty. Uh, is this year's conference wouldn't have been possible. Last year it was possible, but this year's conference wasn't possible without the amazing sponsor which we have this year. I'm going to speak about those guys for a very, very briefly later on, but for the moment, I just want to thank Agado, which brought some, uh, brought some euros. Um, GitHub, who brought some dollars. Um, Nexmo brought some pounds. It really is like that. And New Rally brought me a gold iPhone. No, 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 but no, some money. So that I could buy, uh, buy a, a gold iPhone. All right. This year's keynote speaker, which I already stole three minutes, but he told me it's, fu it's fully okay, is uh, my good friend, Steve Scott, Scotty, the original conference MC. I, I, I call myself a conference MC sometime, but this is the real one. Uh, this is the one from which I stole a few ideas. And uh, um, the, I, I already explained last year that the origin of, of the objective column was back in 2009. Um, And by the way, in 2009, this uh, screenshot from over there on top is, is from the T-shirt of the NS Conference 2009. And it's not any T-shirt, it's Alex's T-shirt. Um, Alex, which was a speaker last year, which I want to thank for coming back this year as a regular attendee, uh, and which I met in 2009 at the uh, NS Conference. So um, that was an amazing conference. Uh, so it, it turns out he made this conference already five times. And the five actually stands more for me than five times. It's that it's sold out in five days. I think the last one even sold in two days, no? Or something like that. So less than five days. Anyways, so when I was ordering for my uh, NS conference, I think 2010, I was like, what? Five days? That's pretty amazing. Okay, I could tell you a story about the Whiskey Lab but maybe we're not going to get into it. This is a, a very special lab, which happens in some uh, dark hotel rooms at NS Conference. You have to go to NS Conference to, uh, to uh, say what it is. And the last thing I want to say is that Scotty is so nice that when we originally planned this, he was telling me, well, I would stay another night, but I don't know about your budget. And then I told him, oh, fuck about the budget. I, I want you one night more with us and, and, and try to see if we can organize a whiskey lab on, on Wednesday evening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome 
Scotty. I could have chosen a slightly closer seat, couldn't I, to yeah. come down. You stop the recording and restart it? Okay, cool. Do you want to give me a um, clicker? Next. Oh, it's got more buttons than one. Next. I'm going to hear that one. Good morning. Oh, this morning has been so pleasant watching stuff sweat. Well, I could just relax and eat and drink coffee and not really, not really care because this is his conference and it's his problem and I can just sort of pretend everything is okay. So thank you for allowing me to experience that stuff. It's been a while. Um, my name is Steve Scott, Scotty. Um, I do a podcast at iDeveloper TV with my good friend, Mr. John Fox at the back there. Hello, John. And uh, as Stuff said, I ran NS Conference. Okay, so one of the things I've learned over the years is you copy from the best. And when it comes to keynotes, the best have to be Apple. Now, if you've ever sort of, who's watched an Apple keynote of any form here? R really, come on. I, either people are just too lazy to put their hand up or I'm in the wrong conference. Who has watched an Apple keynote of any form here? Okay, that's better. That's a little bit more like, oh, it's just going to be hard work this morning, isn't it? I can see that. Now, you know, when there was the iPhone 5S or 5C announcement or, or back at Dub Dub where there was the, the Mac Pro announcement, they don't just come on stage and suddenly say, and here's the iPhone 5S and it's really gorgeous or really powerful or really cool, really expensive, whatever they want to say, now go home. There's a bit of a build up, you see? And if you've noticed, one of the things that they do in the build-up is they, they talk about their sales numbers. They talk about the new stores that they've opened. Basically, what they're saying to you is, we are really, really successful. Which means, in a minute, when we tell you what it is we're releasing, we don't actually give a flying stuff what you think about it, because we're really, really successful. And we're going to prove to you we're really, really successful by putting some whacking great numbers on the screen of how many billions profit we've made in the last 10 minutes, or how many million iPhones we're going to sell before Thursday morning, or whatever it might be. Because actually, when you say, but there's no near field device detection system in it, you say, they'll say, we're successful, we don't care. Now, unfortunately, I'm unable to tell you how many billion dollars I've made in the last 10 minutes. Um, as much as I'd like to, and I can't tell you how rich I am or anything like that to be successful, but I still want to establish my credibility with some big numbers. So, this is a big number. <laughs> it has no bearing on anything, but it's a big number that establishes my credibility for the rest of this. All right, so here we go. So what is this keynote about this morning? Well, I sort of get a little bit passionate about things. And, I'm, I'm down to do more ranting than maybe sort of a philosophical debate or whatever. So this morning is going to be maybe a little bit of a rant about community. But I don't really care if you agree with me, um, because I'm successful, as the big number just said. OK. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't really mind if everything I'm saying connects with you or not. The idea this morning is just to make you think a little bit more around community and app space. So let's start a look at uh, community. You guys obviously get something about community already, because you're here. Yeah, let's be perfectly honest. The information that is going to be presented here from the front this morning, or this afternoon, or tomorrow, or whatever many days we go on for, you could probably find elsewhere. You could probably find elsewhere in a format that uh, is probably easier to digest in a way that you want to digest it. You can read it several times, watch it several times. You could even just get the videos from this. So you are not just here because of the technology. You are not just here to learn today and the next few days because actually you could do that elsewhere. So you in this room already understand that there is more about being at a conference than just learning. There is something powerful in connecting with peers. There is something uh, to be gained. Okay, you have not spent your money to be here just for the information or you've been sent by your boss and you've got no choice. One or the other. Um, if you've been sent by your boss and you have no choice and you're just here for the information, let me show you, you are not gonna get the best from this conference today. You're really not, because that's not what it's about. What it's about is connecting with other people in this room, learning from other people's mistakes, learning from our war stories, even making friends. 
Yeah, there are people who I first met at NS Conference in 2009. I've never worked with them. I've never exchanged a technical email with them necessarily, but they've become good friends. And so actually, conference is about community and generating, and there is a power in it. So when it comes to being app developers, why should you care about community? Okay, let's, as individuals, we can understand why we want to join together here, but when it comes to you as an app developer, you writing your own applications, be it for the Mac or be it for the iPhone or be it for any other device that you have to have inflicted upon you, the reason you should care is community equals connection. Community equals connection. And if you can create connection between people around your app, you gain a strength in your app that will buy you lots and lots of favor. Let's take an example. For many, many years, the WWDC line got longer and longer and longer. And it started getting earlier and earlier and earlier until I think some people were setting up on you know, Saturday night or something ridiculous. Yeah, I can honestly say I never joined the WW line before 10 a.m. in the morning. Um, I was always the one at the back uh, being last into the overflow room. And everyone was saying, well, I just need to be in the same room as Steve Jobs. I just need to go and experience the distortion reality field and all the rest of it or whatever other things we say. But then Steve Jobs had to stand down from being CEO because he was ill and we knew he wasn't going to be at Dub Dub. And then, even worse, he died and he wasn't there anymore. But the line didn't go away. In fact, if anything, the line still gets bigger. Why? People don't like breaking connection. There was a community that formed in the WWDC keynote line. Most people who were standing in the keynote line, it's not about the keynote. It's about the experience of standing in the keynote line. It's about the camaraderie of being with friends. It's about who am I going to meet this year? Where am I, am I going to be? Am I going to make it into the room? So even though the point of what was originally there as the line had gone away, the line stayed because a community had been created. If you can create community around your app or around your service or around and things that you do, you can screw up big time and people won't go away. Okay, whereas if you have no community and you screw up, that's it, people are gone. There's no reason to hold them. Your app is just screwed up. Release two has been a complete you know, abomination to mankind and everybody leaves. If you have a community around your app or your service, whatever you do, although you have just screwed up yourself or you've made a mistake or you've done something wrong, people don't want to break connection. If they have become part of something bigger than themselves, if they have become part of something where they feel that they belong, if they have become part of something that is greater than just the purpose of your app, that will hold them as much as your app did. And companies that can create a a feeling of camaraderie around the users of their app get away with murder compared to those that don't. I'm not saying you should purposely then go out and screw up your app just to prove the point. However, there we are. Okay, so how do you build an electronic community around your app? Well, to be perfectly honest, I have no idea. Okay, so you've just wasted all your euros coming to listen to this talk. You could have stayed in bed. However, like most things in life, um, it's more about, uh, good morning. morning. It's uh, ever felt conspicuous. <laughs> Cameras follow. <laughs> um, like most things in life, there is no formula. This isn't about if you do A, B, C, then it all happens. It really will depend on what's going on. So what I want to look at this morning for the next however long I've got left, is it 30 minutes, something like that? Yeah, about 30 minutes. Is to, is to look at the principles of community. What makes community work? Maybe get you thinking then about how you might attach something around that, around your application, around your company, around the thing that you do, in order that you can gain some of the advantages of it. Depending on who you are and what your app is and what you're doing, will depend on how this can work or not work. So really this is just a bit of an ideas time. So, and hopefully it will be useful, and if not, don't worry, there's lots of other talks to come today, so you still haven't wasted your time. Right, okay, so let's start with the question, what is community? A good place to start is the dictionary. 
a social, religious, occupational, or other group sharing common characteristics or interests and perceived or perceived itself as distinct in some respect of a larger society, of which it exists, usually preceded by the, the business community, the community of scholars, the app community, the iOS community, the developer community, whatever you want to say. Um, too dry, too formal for me, so let's just break that down a little bit into maybe something a little less formal. A group of people who want to be associated with each other because they have something in common and express that association through communication and mutual help. Just gonna let you read that one more time. This is the statement we're gonna look at for the next 30 minutes. A group of people who want to be associated with each other because they have something in common and express that association through communication and mutual help. So the first key of community is people who want to be associated with each other. This is really, really important, okay? You cannot drag people kicking and screaming into community, okay? It just doesn't work. If, if people are being forced, you know, it's like, have you ever been working for a company where you've, um, a, a bigger company where they, they suddenly get all these grand ideas and they, they, they get every, the company together and they say, team, we're gonna be community today. Or, you know, we're gonna have a company loving or something like that. And, and you know, it's just crap, isn't it? It really is. It's like, I am being forced to be part of something I don't want to be part of. I'm not going to really give myself to this. I'll do the team building exercise because actually I don't mind building a log cabin out of four washing up bottles or whatever it might be. But it's, you know, the point is it doesn't work unless people actually want to be there. You know, if you're going to spend your time trying to force people into a, a gathering that they don't want to be at. It's, as we would say in the UK, it will be like herding cats. And if you've ever tried herding cats, it's impossible. It really is impossible. So if you want to build community, you have to give people a reason that they want to be together. Someone who's building community has to find a way of enticing people in a way that gives them something of interest, something of benefit, that they all want to go in the same direction. At first, it will not be about uh, communities normally start, it will not be about we all want to be community and do something. That, that really very rarely happens, someone saying we want to be community. What normally happens is lots of people end up going for the same thing, the same reasons, and then discover, well actually we quite enjoy doing this together, or there's benefits in this together, and let's sort this out. So again, let's go back to the keynote line at WWDC. Initially, people got in that line because they wanted to be in the room to see the keynote first with Steve Jobs. It's only over time that that gained the thing that actually the line became more important than the keynote. I'm serious. The line became more important than the keynote if you really want to look at community aspects of it. So if you want to create a community, you have to create a something that people want to be and do together or some way of bringing people together that they think they are going to benefit from that over time the things that they're doing together will become more important. So, it's really, really hard to get people to, to sort of go in a single direction unless they have something in common. I mean, if you're trying to relate people who are totally nothing in relation at all, um, like this was trying to do, I have absolutely no idea what these people were thinking when they did this. Who's been to a rabies clinic before? Oh. Who's been to a bake sale before? John, have you ever been to both at the same time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was John's poster. I've just discovered who made it. If you are trying to bring people who want to go to a bake sale and people who need to take stuff, uh, an animal to a rabies clinic together at the same time, you're going to be fighting sort of an uphill battle. Okay? So the point is you have to find something in common. What is it that people have in common? Now, in this room, we're going to look at our community a little bit in a later, in later as an example. In this room, we have something obvious in common. We're all developers, or we're associated with the developer uh, developing in some way or another. That's the thing that holds us in common, okay? Most of us in this room will have very different lives. We have different sort of family styles. We come from different countries. We have different hobbies. Yet we have that one thing that holds us in common that we are developers, and actually it's slightly more narrow than that. We're developers in the iOS or the Mac community. So you need to get have something that holds people in common. And the big thing about community is everybody has to win. If you take anything away from this morning, take this phrase away. If you want to create community, everybody has to win. 
If there are losers in your community, your community will fragment, your community will fall apart. It will be a challenge. It will become an elitist group. It will become uh, a, a, a competition. Whereas in real community, everybody wins. Right, so, communication and mutual help. We're going to look a bit more at this in a moment, but actually most community is based around people communicating and mutual help. The reason you are here actually is not just for the sessions, it's so that you can talk to your peers. And through talking to your peers, you will be a better developer, you believe you can learn more than just watching these presentations, um, and you're hoping that you can be helped, and equally, you're hoping that in your conversations you will help others. That is almost the prime driving factor behind any community is this idea of mutual help. That uh, every, and that's where everybody wins comes from. Everybody needs to be helped somewhere, or everybody needs to have the opportunity to help, and we'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Okay, so you want to create a community around your Apple service. You may not, but I'm telling you, you want to create a community around your Apple service. Okay, so how are you gonna do that? Well, that's really gonna depend on your app. This is an app called Atomic Fart. Um, it's the developer of Atomic Fart in the room. Good, okay, right. <laughs> I really have no idea what this app does, by the way. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna be generous to it. I'm assuming it measures radioactive levels of methane extraction or something. Um, if you have an app like Atomic Fart, basically a throwaway app, with no central cause or meaning, you are not probably going to realistically be able to create a community around it. I have no idea how you could create the atomic fart community. And if you did manage it, I'm not sure I would wanna be part of it, to be honest. So, um, we're gonna leave that one to you. So, the type of app or service that you pre will, will maybe be presented, if you're, if you're having to do throwaway apps, um, and what I mean by throwaway apps is, is just something that someone might buy for a bit of fun or to use, if the app has a little bit more of a, um, uh, a purpose or more of something that holds people together. So a good example might be a game. A game is a great app to build a community around because games, you have to solve problems, you have to do things, you have to have an objective. It's bigger than just a one throwaway. You can begin to have common goals and you can begin to help people talk about it. This is an app called EasyBooks. Um, this is an accounting app, okay? Um, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go with games because I think games are so obvious and lots of... Who's a game developer in the room? Nobody, so that's all right, so it doesn't account anyway. Games are so obvious. Let's look at something a little, a little different. Um, who enjoys doing their accounts, be they personal or business accounts? One person. This one person in the middle. Okay, see? So, um, okay, so there is... What we have here is this application is helping solve people's pain. It's a good application. We sell to solve pain problems. Okay? People buy these types of applications because they have something to do that they need help with, they want it to be automated, they want it to be faster. Accounting is a complex business. We all make mistakes of whether, whether we're getting this right or that right. There's lots of questions. The app is a facilitator of a process, but it can't actually make all the decisions for you. Therefore, you could still do with some help maybe using this app or making decisions about expenses. This is an ideal app around which you could create a mutually supporting community to help each other to learn how to use this app to best keep their business or their, financial, uh, their personal accounts up together. So there is a reason here you might create a community together. And that community isn't, no one's going to naturally say, if I said to you, why don't you come to the EasyBooks Accounting App Community Meetup? Most of you are going to say, I think I'd rather pull my toenails out. Um, it is the reality. So, but if over time you can begin to realize that there's a group of people in this community that are helping you and doing things with you and for you, that it's, um, uh, that it's going to maybe start to build itself. So the thing is, the first key of community is you have to gather people. You have to somehow get people in the same place. Now we're talking about electronic communities, so we're talking digitally in the same place. So, how about you make your support forums public. You expose every single problem that someone reports on your app and you allow your users to help one another. Warts and all. It's just an idea. I know companies that have done this, they just say, okay, all our questions are going to be, unless you want to post some private numbers or say in an accounting app, 
All the questions we're going to have in our support forum are going to be public. Anybody can be free to answer them. As a company, we will put a couple of people in those forums, or I will be in the forums as a developer as well, and I will answer the questions. And over time, you are bringing people to exactly the same place. Who are you getting into that place? You are getting the people who have problems, the people who are looking for someone to help them with solutions. And over time, you will notice, if you've any companies that have done this, that actually the support load on the company becomes virtually zero because the community supports itself. But it's a brave thing saying, exposing every support request. Supposing everyone you're saying, this app stinks, it is really junk, it is really crap, and it doesn't add two numbers up together, and the colors are really cruddy. But then someone else comes along and says, yeah, I thought that at first, but actually once I realized this, this, and this, it worked. And actually over time it grows. So facilitate the gathering of people. If you're not brave enough to give them a voice straight away, then maybe even how about a podcast or a video cast around your app to help people. That people, well actually, people don't have to know they've been gathered. I do a podcast, thousands of people listen to it every single week. They are a community of sorts, the beginning, the embryonics of a community, even though they never meet one another because they all do what? They all do the same thing, they listen to the podcast. So I've created a common gathering point out of which things can go on. So the first thing is you need to gather people. I'm going on far too slowly here. Gather people and then, when you're ready, if not straight away, facilitate communication. It's always going to be communication that will build your community. Your job, if you are, remember, you cannot build community, you can only help it to develop. Your job is to make sure people can talk to one another. Make sure people can communicate with one another because that is what will do it. What do people enjoy most about the WWC keynote line? It is not standing in line and doing this for four hours. I mean, there may be one or two people who are really sad for whom that is the highlight of the, of the conference. It's the conversations. It's the conversations in the line. It's meeting the new people in the line. Communication is always what builds community. The reason people come to conferences is to talk to people. Communication. If you can facilitate communication, you will naturally begin to build community. And then, remember, make sure everyone wins. So when the people begin to talk to each other, let's go back to say you've done a software support forum. When people begin to talk to one another, it's your job to sort of set the tone for the community. You know, if, you're, if you go to the type of forums where the first time I ask a question is a newbie about how do I enter uh, my first value for my invoice, and the first response I get is, you're a freaking moron, that's so obvious, press the new invoice button, yeah? That person's not gonna stay around very long. So it's your job to facilitate the environment, to sort of moderate that, to say, Actually, we don't have that sort of talk in here. We welcome everybody. We accept that everybody was new once. And to make sure the community takes on the tone that you want it to take on. You know, as the runner of a conference, you have to decide, am I going to allow this? Am I going to allow that? Am I going to allow this sort of talk, this sort of speaker, this sort of event to go on? Because that sets the tone for the community. You cannot control what goes on, but you can set the tone, you can set the standards. And the key is, you need to be looking at everything to make sure everyone wins. I put that in there again because that's the important thing. Right, so let's have a look at the structure of community. We've got about 10 minutes left. We're going to look at the structure of community to help you see community and how it might develop. And we're going to look at the iOS stroke Mac developer stroke slightly wider Mac community as an example. Um, this isn't the exact way that everything is going to go on in community. But it just helps you to work out why certain, you need to allow certain things to happen. You need to uh, see certain things arising and how that can help and not help. And we're going to look at the types of people that you need in community to make community really successful. So let's start. You need superstars. Communities need superstars. They don't even have to be superstars that are liked, okay? Um, if I were to show you um, superstars, okay. So you do not need someone like... Jennifer Lopez to be part of your accounting community, okay? She is unlikely to be doing her own accounts. And uh, so when I say superstars, I don't mean you need a, a big TV personality or something like that. You need people who in the community are seen as stars. So people probably more like in our community are John Gruber and Marco Arment. Now, I don't have to tell anybody in this room that if I asked for your opinions on John Gruber, it would be mixed. 
Okay? Some people love the guy, some people hate the guy, some people are somewhere in between. The important thing is about superstars is they're superstars. They do not have to be universally liked. In fact, if they are universally liked, they're probably not superstars because superstars create a whole range of effects. However, what superstars do in a community is really encourage people by the fact that you can become a superstar. That's an amazing incentive. Within a community, the fact that you can become a superstar, even though you think it will never be you, you'll never be part of that, you're not going to be a superstar, the very fact that there are superstars in the community says that this community provides opportunity. And opportunity is a really important incentive. So as people are beginning to rise up in your community, as people are beginning to maybe get a bigger name than you've actually got in your own community, that's good. That's good. You need them. They're incentive. So what else do we need? What do we need next? We need to find the right button on the clicker. We need achievers. Superstars are superstars for very strange reasons. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, you sometimes look at someone on the TV or in the music industry or in our own communities and you just think, I have no idea what they did. I've no idea how they got there. I've no idea why they deserve that position. Um, they just seem to have risen up and become these sort of uh, hugely superstar-like people, you know, maybe overnight, maybe over a number of years, and you don't really know why. That's not a problem, but you do need achievers. You do need people who you do know why they've risen up. You do know why they have uh, got to where they've got to. So in our community, we might be looking at people like Matt Gemmell, who has built himself up by writing, by having design principles, by sharing his thoughts on apps with the community, or maybe a Will Shipley who from Delicious Monster, um, who did Delicious Library, a hugely influential app from the beginning of the ge Delicious generation, around the time of um, OS X Leopard. Or, or Craig Hockenbury with Twitterific, you know, one of the first uh, Twitter clients. These guys have taken a status within our community because they achieved something big that we recognize. Okay, so we could each say why these people are there. This is important because actually it means you can achieve something in your community. How this relates to your app is totally different in whatever else, but it's, this is, I'm using our community because we understand it a little bit. So we need achievers, we need superstars, we need achievers. This is hard to start with, but over time, you need the old boys. <laughs> um, they may be, no, this is Kevin Hopter from No Thirst Software, by the way. Maybe they don't need to be quite as old as Kevin. Uh, and I'm not talking old in age either. Actually, what I mean by old boys is uh, you need people who have been around for a little while, okay? This is quite important, and this takes time. But because what it says, if you come into a community and there is someone like a Daniel Jalkert or a Brent Simmons, who's heard of these guys? Okay, a few of you, not everyone. Okay, um, let me go back. Who'd heard of John Gruber? Okay, who'd heard of Marco Arment? Okay, so people who'd all heard of the superstars, the times are getting less here. Okay, yeah, Brent Simmons has been in the Mac developer community since, yeah, well, I don't know, the Big Bang. Um, you know, Daniel Jelkert was working in Apple on, I think it was um, OS 7, and then became an indie. Uh, these guys have been in the community for a long, long time, and what people who've been in your community for a long, long time do is bring stability. They say that this is a place where you can live for a long time. This is a place worth investing in because actually it's going to be around in a while. Okay? How, yeah, we, how many people have seen a new social network fly up or something like that and you think, I'm not going to bother getting involved because it's going to be here for five minutes. We, we tend to judge our willingness to get involved in something on is it going to last. And obviously, at the beginning of your community or whatever it might be, that is a hard thing to do, but over time, if everyone sees that only people in this community, even though your community is 10 years old, have only been in it for 10 minutes, that's, that's suggesting that it's not really somewhere with longevity or somewhere to worth invest yourself in. Whereas if there are people who've been around for years, people you want people telling the stories, even if they're telling them for the thousandth time of how I remember when the Mac was just one key and it had naught bits and whatever else, um, or something similar. So you need the old timers, educators. These are the people who are going to help other people in a more formal teaching style. Uh, in our community, it's probably the authors, the book writers, or the bloggers, maybe. Um, so people like Marcus Zara, Matt Long, Bill Dudney, Tim Eistead, Graham Lee, the list could have gone on and on. 
You know, the people who, who wrote the books, the people who, oh, has everyone read Marcus's core data book or whatever else? They're seen as the educators. They're helping other people in the community. Really, really important because they bring knowledge and knowledge brings empowerment and empowerment, um, empowerment brings satisfaction. So you need your educators and you need communicators. You need your people who are going to rah-rah the community. You need the people who are going to do things to, to sort of say, come on, this is great, or to hold things together. In our community, this might be, uh, for example, podcasters. So people like myself, or Manton Reese from the Core Inch podcast, or Somora from NS Brief, or Dave Vera, who from the iOS Dev Weekly email. These are sort of one-way broadcast mediums, but they sort of do bind us together. They do allow things go on, they communicate information, they bring news, so you need communicators, people who are going to share about the things that are going on, people who are going to spend the time to find out what's going on and tell other people. Then we need the gatherers, the people who are going to bring people together. Now this might be digitally still or find new ways. Okay? When your community, say you've established your community through some really great software forums, Okay? I'm just using that as an example. Don't limit it to that by any means at all. Use your imagination. And then somebody else says, well, I'm going to arrange this meetup or this hack or this whatever it might be over here. That you want to encourage. You want to encourage people who gather. As long as the focus is around the things that you need them to be focusing around, encourage people to gather. In our industry, of course, gathering is conferences. So, you know, we're here at uh, Objective Cologne, but um, the, the, you know, over the years, they've been growing and growing. Uh, they've got cocoa heads. Just physical meetups in the pub or at the coffee machine. They're, yeah, they're, they're really encouraging. I once worked for a company that took out the coffee machines. Um, and they said, OK, we work out that the average person is spending almost up to an hour a day getting coffee and hanging out where the coffee is. And, and we think we could be more productive by taking out those coffee machines and we'll have people deliver coffee to your desk. Anytime you want coffee, just use the little app on your screen and say, I want coffee, and someone will deliver that coffee to your desk. And um, they got people to sit at their desk for an extra hour a day, but the productivity just plummeted. So many problems were being solved at the coffee machine as people just said, oh, I'm working on this bitch of a problem with this, this, and this. And someone from a totally different department would say, well, have you thought about this? And so much was getting solved. So the facilitation of gathering is really important. Right, how are we doing for time? Badly. Okay. You need helpers. Helpers are really important to a community. For the sake of our community here, we're talking about, let's, let's use Stack Overflow as an example. Okay? So here we can see this, this is a, this data is probably, I took these screenshots, I know, quite a few months ago, so they're well out of date now, but the principles are still the same. So uh, let's just look at some people on Stack Overflow. Peter Hosey, who knows Peter Hosey? Few people know Peter Hosey? Okay, let's just look at Peter Hosey on Stack Overflow. When I took this snapshot, which was quite a long time ago now, Peter Hosey had answered 2,099 questions on Stack Overflow. Okay? Even if each one of those questions took him one minute to answer, that's a reasonable investment of time. But actually, I suspect some didn't. Uh, some took a lot longer. So, yeah, he spent 2,099 2, answers. I think you could probably describe Peter Hosey as a community helper, okay? The point is, lots and lots of people in the community will have no idea who he is unless you're one of the people he's helped. And even then, we're not always that good at recognising him. In comparison, during that time that he's answered 2,099 questions, he's asked 24. I think Peter Hosey can probably be categorised as a helper, Okay, now let's go to the other end. That's Peter Hosey, by the way, if you want to follow him on Twitter. Let's go to the other end. The receivers. In order for there to be helpers, you have to have receivers. So let's go back to Stack Overflow and let's pick up Fuzzy Goat. Is Fuzzy Goat in the room? There we are. <laughs> Welcome, Fuzzy Goat. I've been longing to meet you. Okay. Fuzzy Goat has asked 399 questions on Stack Overflow. This is from all from the Objective C side of things. Okay? Fuzzy Goat has had to ask 399 questions. He has looked for help almost 400 times. You could say that in our community, Fuzzy Goat is a receiver. Okay? 
in the same time, he's answered 17 questions. So he's given less. And you might at first want to look down upon Fuzzy Goat. But actually, you need both in a community. You see, there are some people who are never going to stand up and speak at a conference because they don't, you know, that's just not who they are. They're never going to write a book. They're never going to do a podcast. Yet they have a lot to offer the world. Okay? Um, by the way, Peter Hosey does speak at conferences and he does write books, so he's a really bad example of this, but there we are, never mind. You know? However, they have a lot to offer. And if your community can provide a place where they can offer what they have, you begin to validate and encourage and build up those people. But in order for them to, um, in order for them to be able to do that, in order for people to be able to offer what they have, there has to be someone who wants to receive it. So unless there are people out there who are prepared to receive the help from somebody, people who want to give the help can't give it. Does that make sense? Yeah? So if the people who are asking for help are made to feel bad, they will stop asking for help, and the consequence will be is those who want to help won't be able to help, so they'll go and find somewhere else where they can help. And so this, di um, this dimension of community of you need people who need help and people who are willing to give help is what actually creates it. And both are valid. And over time, people will transition. Some people will always be receivers. Some people will, will never grow to be helpers. But that doesn't matter. You need both within your community. So if you're seeing your community um, doing things, whether it be through forums or through a, a Twitter or a Google group or um, you know, whatever, whatever format you choose to take it in, okay, you've got to ensure this stuff goes on. Make sure there is opportunity for people to help. Make sure there is opportunity for people to become superstars. Make sure that you're not there, you know, when someone posts a document saying, this is how you do this, you go, well, that's not the official documentation. You can't put that on this forum, I'm afraid. No, you need to make sure that people are encouraged to educate one another. You need to make sure that everyone feels there. You need to remember, everybody has to win. Everybody has to feel a valid part of the community. That is the key key thing. That is your job when creating community. If you do that, it will be a place that people want to be. Now, does this have anything to do with the features in your app? Does this have anything to do with the design of your app? The release schedule of your app? Nope, not at all. Nothing to do with it at all. Does, will this stuff work for your app? It depends on your app, as we discussed earlier on. However, if your app has this type of community, or your service has this type of community around it, remind you again, when you screw up, people won't go running for the door. And let's face it, we all screw up at some point, don't we? We all screw up at some point. People won't go running for the door because they have a connection in a way that just your app on itself can never create. They're, for them to switch from your app to your competitor's app, is a far bigger step than just buying a new app on the App Store and putting their password in. It means leaving something they enjoy. You know, for, for some of us here who uh, really embraced uh, the iOS community or the macOS community, um, you know, it doesn't matter really to me how good Android gets. You know, or Windows 8 gets. Now, as a consultant, I, you know, there will come a point that if iOS becomes so bad and, and the other becomes so good, you have to make a professional decision. But it really doesn't matter to me how good the others get. As long as iOS stays good enough and the market stays good enough, because I love being part of this community. And so it's not just about the technology, it's about being part of this community. And that would hold me here. So if iOS 8 turns out to be a mental cock-up that the world goes back, you know, I'm going to wait for iOS 9 because I'm not going to abandon what I've spent five, six years being part of and enjoying being part of, hopefully helping to grow. So, and, and it gives me a connection. And maybe you feel that about it as well. Maybe you don't. That will show you where you are. Okay? And that's, if you can create that same feeling for your users, then that gives you an awful lot of power. Not to abuse, but an awful lot of power. So, make sure to keep that going on you look after those who win least. Spend your time making sure those who are winning least start winning something. And then you will create a place that is great for your users to live. 
and because you have to have it in any OS, a keynote these days, as much as community can be electronic, real community is actually what you've got here today. It's physical presence. So I'm just going to encourage you in this opening session of this conference, make the most of it. There's a number of us here that there's no reason that we could not leave here having met every single other person in this room. Even the ones you think look a bit dodgy and you don't actually want to speak to. Yeah? Because they may have something to give, they may need to receive, they may be the future superstar who will remember you in their glory. <laughs> yeah? So, take advantage of these next couple of days and uh, make the most of it. Thank you. Okay, we actually have time for like one question if anybody wants oh, to ask questions. a question. Oh, questions. You didn't tell me I had to answer questions. Um, <laughs> for if anybody wants to ask one question, just um, raise your hand. Otherwise, um, Scotty is going to be there anyway, uh, somewhere over there, and just grab him, but not too hard. No question? Oh, no, no I don't want to answer his question. <laughs> He's one of the dodgy ones. <laughs> Something snarky. No. Uh, do you have any uh, quick example of, of something that was very trying in, in a community that you were a part of, and and you were able to, to you know, an example of, of some uh, uh, failure that you were able to overcome because of, of a bad community. I mean, uh, because of a community. So you mean something that was going on in the community that I had to then facilitate that it wasn't an example of some problem where community came to the rescue. Give us an example. Like the community the came maker. to the rescue. Yeah. Okay, now I will, um, I'll give you an example of where what community does you can't really control, you can only influence. So let me give you an example of um, where a community facilitator had to influence. Who remembers the conference C4 that ran out of Chicago for quite a few years? Okay, a, a few people. Okay. Um, C4 was a very uh, uh, sort of technology research conference. Basically, it, uh, Jonathan Wolf Wrench, who ran it, great community guy, um, he, he wanted to create an event that just looked at lots of different technologies, things of the future, and whatever else. And it was mainly attended by Mac and iOS developers. And of course, because he was just trying to stretch this further and further and further, he would bring in people from further out of the realms of things to share their technology, to share things that they were doing. And this was back a few years ago, and Twitter was you know, it just become really big. And actually, because it wasn't iOS, the community was starting to make some quite snarky comments about speakers while they were speaking um, on Twitter. And for those of us outside, it was sounding like, you know, these, these talks were dreadful and whatever else. But actually, they were just different. They are outside of it. And uh, Wolf had to come into the conference the next day and just say, guys, as a community, this really isn't acceptable. This really, we are not portraying ourselves well. We are letting ourselves down. This is what the world is seeing us. These people are coming and sharing with us. He came in and shaped the community. Okay? And since then, conferences have been different. I mean, I make a point in this conference every year of reminding people, you know, these speakers are here on their own time. They're here to help us. You can disagree with them. You can argue with them, but you must respect them. Okay? So that influenced me in how I run a conference. So that's an example of a, someone who was facilitating the community, helping keep the community on track instead of breaking down. And, Although it caused a big fuss at the time, I think his statements, which were very public, shaped iOS and our sort of areas, technology conferences, from then on. And so that was an example of someone shaping community and rescuing the community. Is that the sort of thing you meant? Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning C4. If you haven't heard about this conference, just go check your history. This is part of a history, and I've tried to get Wolf this year to speak. I will try again next year. Thank you, Scotty. Big Thank round you. of applause for Scotty. Okay, we're taking a break for like 10 minutes and be back here in like 10 minutes for Katarina. I do not understand this argument. It makes no fucking sense to me. Shut up. Okay. okay. <laughs> look, look, listen, seriously. Fuck ones and zeros. Utter bullshit. Fuck ones and zeros. Utter bullshit. Okay. <laughs> look, look, okay. <laughs> look, look. I do not under, I do not under, I do, I do, I do understand this argument. Understand this argument. Understand this. Utter bullshit. It makes no fucking sense to me. It makes no fucking ones and zeros. Ones and zeros. Ones and zeros. Ones and zeros. Ones and zeros.